Welcome back, everyone, to Book of Dawn, Ioth Academy. Here after the break, Tormented by Gnomes, your Game Master, Crowen, Lemon Kiwi, and Necra. When last we left our heroes, after months of battling against demigods and infernals, they now face the deadly challenge called a group project. Garnet has successfully paired off with her character's crush. Uh, Mason is going to be with his girlfriend in this project. Ariana may or may not be pairing up with Hennen Brook, the guy who's really into birds. It's a little bit vague. But before Garnet can go on her coffee date with the tall strapping young lad Cyrus, the Codex has a very important meeting. This is their normal scheduled meeting time, and they have to take a formal vote. As uh, So Mason's not required for this one. Ariana and Garnet, theoretically, are. Cyrus will also be there. He's a member of the Codex. Renobi will be there and a whole bunch of others as well. Uh, I assume you're attending. Do I need to know anything about your attendance before we get to there? Do we know the results of the vote before the meeting? Nope. The okay. vote is technically being taken, though I am going off of what the community members of the Codex voted as well. All right. Since you don't have to be here for this, Mason, uh, what are you doing? Um, I think Mason is, um, I think just doing some of the, starting on some of the project with Svantisco. When you go to meet her, she is pacing back and forth and she says, oh, good, perfect. Mason, um, hi meeting tonight. Mm -hmm. Calling up the vote. Gonna wrap things mm -hmm. up. Uh, Volsh Tabor, the tea house. Wait, what did she say? We're having a meeting. We're gonna call the vote. We're gonna get everyone's yeah. opinion on it. The first of the two, not the second vote, just the first one at okay. Volsh Tabor tonight. The tea house. Ah, uh, okay. Are you stressed about it? <sighs> a little. It's, it's a lot. You know, after talking with Elle now and everything she said about the Academy trying to defend itself. And if we make this change, if we make this choice, even if it's for now, what about Kapesk and what about the others outside? What are they going to think? Well, I mean, hopefully they understand. I mean, I don't, no matter what decision we make, I, I, I think it's well thought out. It's going to be calculated. It's going to result in hopefully the best. And if they, they should be able to know how to work with that. You're right. You're right. Okay. Uh, what do we want to do our project on? I've, I've been so, I've been thinking about everything else. I haven't even got there. Yeah, I know. Um, here to, I know it's a lot to readjust and I mean, here to help maybe be a bit of, of, of focus for you, if you'd let me. Um, project, though, yes. Um, we could just do it on where I'm from, where you're from. Wouldn't be that difficult. But Thotlo and Oryx? Uh, it's pretty far away. We'd have to yeah, do a lot. Have much, do they have much I mean, dealing together? <laughs> Oryx, Oryx is an, one, a very important tribe, spiritually speaking. Um, and all the tribes are in contact with each other, but Bothotlo is way the hell far away. <laughs> yeah. So there is there is history there that you could talk about, but it's going to be a higher DC because you're going to have to dig deeper to find like these little passages of here and there, etc. So totally yeah. doable, but maybe a little more difficult. Uh, difficult schoolwork? That's not really Mason's, uh, no. <laughs> Mason's uh, go-to there. Mm -hmm. Okay, maybe not. Um, hmm. Would be easier. Still, two of the dragon tribes, maybe just some different ones. Um, how about my tribe and the Vudazan tribe, the blue dragon tribe? They're not that far away. Uh, okay. They're just like Ioth, like the academies between the two of them. Mm -hmm. Um, you take Vudazan and I'll take mine. Yeah, we can we can do that. Okay, let's, we can study a little bit, but I have to prepare for this. There's a, there's a lot of strong opinions about letting the Academy off the hook. 
Yeah, I know. Not an easy thing to swallow for most of most of us. Yeah. yeah. But they haven't heard the things that we've heard and the way that we've heard them. So as long as that's communicated well enough, mm. hopefully they can trust the process, trust the intention. I hope so. I feel like there's still not a whole lot of trust left over after everything that's happened. No, but hopefully this will be a step towards regaining that. She nods, adjusts her ponytail, and she'll sit down to study a little bit with you, but she's, it's more about just kind of sitting in close physical proximity with you to get some, some comfort, get some encouragement before this big, important meeting has to go down. Yeah, I imagine Mason would like probably start to be like, okay, like, what do I know about the Vuzan tribe? And then just it, it derails into just like talking mm-hmm. and comforting and mm-hmm. prepping for the, for the meeting. All right. Speaking of prepping for meetings, the Codex is now gathered in one of the empty classrooms in Tarsal Moor Hall. Garnet, as uh, one of the newly elected scholars, officially so, you and Cryus and Henan Brook are all to lead this meeting. Uh, Cryus seems very focused on his notes for the vote. Looks over at his notes to read. Along with him. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, it's very neat, clean handwriting, and it's all in a formal language, like the formal language that a ruling council, probably based on what the uh, the faculty would use of Ioth Academy, except translated into common instead of the Alfar tongue, because as much as it might behoove every member of the Codex to learn that educated language, uh, he has reluctantly come to the conclusion that not everyone has. And he'll say, all right, so it's just these precepts. It is proposed that the Codex shall consider a probationary mutual agreement with the Kizjon to combine resources and efforts in the pursuit of this solemn duty, said solemn duty being the preservation of the teachings and legacy of Ioth and advancing the arts of magic and the knowledge of our brethren. All right? Okay. Uh, He'll go ahead and stand up and uh, call this meeting of the Codex to order. You, he kind of wishes he had a little mallet that he could use to for it. Uh, meanwhile, sitting out in the rank and file, we've got Ariana, just another face in the crowd. We've got Renobi, we've got Cyrus sitting up, taking notes. Um, all the different members of the Codex gathered together. Some of them seem kind of bored. Zoku's there, Lex is there, uh, Ned is there, obviously, and... They're all sitting down, and Christ will go ahead and <clears throat> he points at his throat, tunes a little bit as he casts prestidigitation to make sure that his voice carries all the way across, and also gets like maybe a couple of tones deeper. <clears throat> Wherefore, it is our solemn duty to preserve the teachings and legacy of Ioth. Wherefore, it is our solemn duty to tirelessly advance the art of magic and the knowledge of our brethren. Wherefore, the preservation of this academy is integral to both of the previously mentioned solemn duties. Wherefore, the organization called the Kizjan is similarly dedicated to the protection and safety of this academy and its students. Therefore, it is proposed that the Codex shall consider a probationary mutual agreement with the Kizjan to combine resources and efforts in the pursuit of this solemn duty collectively. Uh, all in favor. And Ariana, okay, so the two of you are great. Uh, there's like one hand that doesn't go up. Almost everybody else either spaces out and isn't paying attention or puts their hands up. All opposed. Uh, there's only one, Lex, the, the tiefling, she puts her hand up. Let the record show that on this day it is here so resolved that this probationary agreement will be considered and the scholars shall meet to discuss for their actions. Okay. The next matter of business, academics. And he starts just going through the minutes and the agenda and everybody starts, some of the people start tuning things out. Um, but yeah, the codex has voted to talk to the kids, John and potentially work together to protect the school and the Academy. This scene can resolve and wind down to a close unless Garnet or Ariana have anything else that they want to do with it. All right. Cyrus, as everyone is 
heading out, Cyrus goes over to Garnet and just says, I'll be, how does an hour from now sound? Yeah, great. I'll go drop my stuff off and see you at the library. Volsh Tabor first. You need to make sure that we're, we're both in the right mindset, fully taken care of before we start. It's going to be a lot of hard work, so I want to make sure that uh, you have every possible advantage first. Right. What was that first word he said? Volsh Tabor. <laughs> it's the coffee house. Oh, right. Of course. Yes. yes. <laughs> see you at Tim Hortons. <laughs> All right. He'll smile and take off. And uh, yeah, everyone channels out. About an hour later, Ariana, what are you going to do tonight? You don't have you don't have a hot date. Um, Hennen hasn't hit you up about studying yet. What do you what do you have in mind? Yeah, if Hennen hasn't hasn't hit her up, she's not doing shit about the podcast. <laughs> like, that's just not her, that's not her vibe. Mm -hmm. uh, she would definitely be practicing her newfound spell. Okay, where are you practicing? Uh, the Grove. Oh, you're going to head down to the Grove. Okay, cool. Yeah. Yeah, this she's just remembering, like, some of the places that she felt like could use a little mm -hmm. spruce up. Uh, so she's going to try to, like, figure that out. Yeah, the spruce trees could use some sprucing. Go ahead and give me a Arcana check and a Nature check. Oh, boy. A 13 on Arcana. And a natural one on nature. You got anything for that? Or are we letting it ride? Uh, uh, nope. You... I, I have nothing. Okay, so chat. So you had an inspiration out. from chat and you had a card inspiration. If you want to cash that in. I thought that I used the card inspiration. You used the chat inspiration. You still have the card inspiration. Oh, Oh, yeah, I should use that. <laughs> I might accidentally set the grove on fire. <laughs> okay, go ahead and roll again. Oh, my God. Let's go. Let's absolutely go. Okay, oh, you channel. There's, so there's, trouble. there's a grove of, of spruce trees, and you're standing there, like, just reconnecting with the, letting the, the grass and the smell of the forest and all that flow through you. You can feel it drawing up life. And as you reach inside for that power that lies within you and let it flow forth, roll 8d6, please. Uh-oh. Uh, Uh-oh. Uh, oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, I like that I get so many natural ones. Okay, 21. As you reach forward, the power within you, uh, it, it's like it went down the wrong pipe. It was like you were drinking water and went down the wrong pipe. It was the wrong, it was the same source of energy, but it came out as fire. And the trees explode as a fireball goes, it bursts from inside of it. There's splinters that go flying absolutely everywhere. Uh, roll a dexterity saving throw for me, please. <laughs> 12. What's the DC on your spells, Ariana? The DC? Oh, no. Because <laughs> um, your proficiency modifier just went up, so it just got a little higher. Uh, I was cast... Wait, no, that's not what I meant. Oops. Oh, there you go. Yeah, there we go. A 14. Okay, yeah, so that doesn't pass. Are you fire-resistant for any reason? I forget. Absorb elements resistant. <laughs> you could you could absorb elements to try to protect yourself from your own fire. If you I want. would absorb elements. Okay. So as the tree explodes and this like fiery eruption flows towards you, this is the same effect that you used on accident when Uncle was going nuts and just blowing every and, and trying to kill everyone. That was your first fireball. This is your second fireball. Maybe your third. I don't remember. Congratulations. All right. As it blows up in your face, you instinctively react to pull that fire back into you cycling it all the way through and you only take 10 points of fire damage uh but the the particular circle of trees that you were in is now just destroyed and on fire uh ariana would try to act as quickly as possible mm -hmm. uh creating water 
and trying okay. to distribute it like over the flames. Okay, yeah, no, she'll she'll go ahead and start putting things out. Untermialer wow. sends his regards. Oh. Um. All right, so you immediately start cleaning it up. Are you going to stick around if people show up, or are you going to flee the scene of the explosion? No. <laughs> I think Ariana would run away. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, psh, and as wardens and caretakers begin arriving to investigate the explosion, you dip. Roll a either stealth or, yeah, roll stealth for me to avoid notice. And if that doesn't work, you can roll constitution to just haul. Oh, a 10 <laughs> yeah roll a flat constitution check to see if you can hold your breath long enough to like if you can just run a 16 okay so you're not being very stealthy at all but you just book it and don't stop <laughs> running until you're like all the way deep inside the woods back in that place where you got lost ages ago where uh freaking dubasif was once in prison you are out of there <laughs> meanwhile and you have disadvantage on your next roll for blowing up the, the grove. Meanwhile, oh, no. fair enough. <laughs> I that. How is Garnet preparing for her date? Oh, like getting real cute, just doing the hair, mm -hmm. putting a nice outfit on, little subtle perfume. Uh, you know, looking nice but effortless is the key. <laughs> Will bring all the books she can about Brontha and any, if she has any books about his Iron Empire, we'll mm -hmm. bring that along with the Wolf Spain. Okay. All right. When you arrive, Cyrus is early. He has a table already prepared for you. And he's got a, let's see. What do you do? A hot chocolate already out on the table. And That's he, so <laughs> when you walk in, he sees you and he stands up out of his chair. Your chair is already pulled out for you. He gives you a smile. And as you're walking towards, you notice the entire freaking Kiz John at a table to the right. He's got like a little table in the back. The entire Kiz John is sitting at a table having a very loud argument. We'll just uh, side eye Una to invisible mode and mm -hmm. listen it. Why don't you listen in on that and tell me what's going on there? But we'll just try not to make any eye contact <laughs> and we'll just head through the Cyrus table and have Una just listen in. All right. He is going to remain standing until you've sat down and then he'll go ahead and take a seat and he, he leans over to say something. Roll a perception check, please. You can barely hear him as somebody pounds the table and makes an impassioned speech over at the Kiz John table. Uh, but he, he said something along the lines of, it was an educated guess. If, you're, if it's not to your taste, they have lots of other options. Wait, he got me a hot chocolate? Yeah, he got you a hot chocolate. Oh, that is so cute. Um... He has some kind of tea in front of him. It smells oh. very cinnamony. Oh, uh, yeah. I mean, who doesn't love chocolate and just sips it? How hot is it? It's fairly hot. It's pretty hot. Like, not going to burn your taste buds, oh. but if you don't have, like, if you're the kind of person who waits for your coffee to cool, you're going to want to wait for this to cool. She takes a sip because she's, like, nervous and trying to, like, <laughs> obviously like it. And she, like, burns her lip and <laughs> tries to play it off and... Roll a deception mother. check. <laughs> it's not good. A nine. Mm. <laughs> so you're trying not to make a face. You make a face. Meanwhile, he looks over like as if trying to see if you're all right. Meanwhile, over at the Kiz John table. Roll a perception check for Una, please. Is wisdom, I believe. Mm -hmm. Eight. 
All right, well, it's a very loud conversation, so it's not like it's that hard to listen in on, but um, you're not maybe getting all the nuances. She is reciting to everybody, but it sounds like this is a continuation of a conversation that's been going on for a few days. She's reciting to everyone what Elnow told her, practically yelled at her when all of you were up in the office. When Elnow was saying, like, we are do it's all we can do to keep the students safe, and we are barely accomplishing that. She's reciting that whole conversation. Um, and there is a very a lot of opinions around the table. What they're discussing is it has something to do with stopping something, not doing something that has to do with the academy. Uh, roll an insight check for yourself, Garnet. I am very into this hot chocolate. <laughs> yeah, you're, you're just, you know, the thing where you just keep on going up to sip, but you're not actually drinking. You're just like fidgeting and nervous. Mason, the Kids John has, in fact, had a couple of days to debate whether or not they should stop uh, pressuring the Academy to do more for the wide world and focus more on just helping keep the students safe and doing direct action for in favor of the refugees rather than trying to move IOP Academy to do more for the world. Uh, and it is a contentious subject because even people who think that's a good idea don't think that the Academy can be trusted to, like, let's say things get better for at some point. There are some people who say, yeah, if things get better and we've let them off the hook, they're still not going to, how do we know they're actually going to change and, and help once they have the resources? How do we know they're not going to hoard them all to themselves? There's a lot of opinions flying around. Does Mason have a say? Does he have a take on this? Yeah. Uh, Mason's take is Mason will say, like, you know, if we're at this academy and we're all here for all sorts of different reasons, some want to be here, some might not, but we're here. And so we can choose to actively work against it, which we have been doing because we thought that they were actually working against us, which I, tr I believe isn't true. But if we keep on actually working against uh, each other, there's only so much we can do. We can still try to hold the Academy accountable once they have more resources and things are in place. If the Academy turns back on us then, then uh, at that point we'll have to make harsher moves. But for now, I think this is the best it's going to get. And not that that's just settling or, or bad. I mean, the world is bad out there. We can't do everything, but we can do the little bit that we can out there helping those people. Mm. Balvarax agrees with you and comments that this is just for now. They're not, nobody's swearing a binding oath. If we make this choice now, we can hold this vote again tomorrow if something changes. We're yep. never locked into anything. We can always act as we see fit. Mm -hmm. And after some other people get up and say their piece quite loudly back and forth and back and forth, eventually, almost overwhelmingly, the vote, the Kizjan vote to stop focusing on pressuring the Academy into action. Roland, yeah, no, Garnet is too distracted. Uh, Mason, though, you, there's a little bit of subtext to this that you would kind of be aware of. This is going to call off some plans that the Kiz John had, some of the more daring plans. Uh, I mean, you knew about the raid on Uter Mahler's office. That was not the last thing that was in the works. Yeah. And if this is the case, then some of those things are probably not going to happen. They're going to focus elsewhere. After that vote passes, Francisco will take a deep breath, take a drink of her hot drink and says, okay, we are not going to call this vote tonight. The next matter is the Codex would like to help us. The Codex would like to work with us on this. 
Uh, there's a mix of reactions, some groans, some shouts of outrage, some people who just shrug. They're like, yeah, that seems reasonable. Some rolling of eyes. Some Chico says, I, we are not calling a vote tonight. We have time to talk about this. Everybody will say their piece, all right? And some of them proceed to do so. Uh, Garnet, that table is not getting any less loud <laughs> during this entire process. I'm going to turn briefly back to Ariana. Ariana... After you have run like the Dickens to escape from the wardens, the caretakers, anybody else who might be trying to, you know, figure out why that exploded, what is your next course of action? What's your next plan? I think running immediately to Sig. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, <clears throat> You know the way at this point, but you're going to have to go up the staircase, the floating staircases. And when you're going through this floating staircases, there are wardens walking back and forth, keeping an eye on things. And you know by now that they probably have um, communication magic, messages, yeah. sending, stuff like that. So they, they might be aware, even the ones this far up might be aware of the fact that there was an explosion. What is your plan for getting past them and reaching SIG? Oh, that's a great question. <laughs> uh, I will try to use silent images mm -hmm. to distract them. Okay. Roll an arcana check or a deception check. Your choice. Oh, no. And the survey says 11. <laughs> Versus a warden's intelligence <laughs> no a no. natural 20 uh, a warden immediately no. turns around and at that moment as you're coming to a crossroads in the floating staircase you hear a voice pipe up well that's obviously not real I mean that's a cantrip that, that's very very simple <laughs> magic I can't imagine that anyone would fall for that. That can't be real, right? Uh, look at this. You're, you're trained in these matters. That's not real. No. No, that's not real. That's weird, right? Maybe uh, you should investigate that. The speaker immediately stops talking. As you turn to your left, you see a Lozrin standing there looking at you just Face blank, but eyes incredibly wide, and just staring. How long has it been since I've seen a Lowe's room? I feel like it was the beginning of the school year. Okay. Because that's usually that when everyone wild. sees each other at at the you know the auditorium, and that's when Wait, you. Wait, was, was that when I told him all? That's when you lost it. You finally snapped with him. <laughs> oh. Oh. Uh. Hi. Hello, Srin. What's up? Did you hear that explosion? Yeah, I did hear that. Some plants That's exploded weird, in the grove. Oh, is that what that was? Yes, some plants exploded. Oh, gosh. Well, that's awful. Uh... Ariana is an expert in exploding plants. She might be helpful for your investigation. Yeah, mm -mm. I'd be happy to go check it out. All right. The warden says, all right, thank you both. Uh, come with me, I guess. And he leads you back down the staircase. And as he does, a Lozern is staring over his shoulder, just sort of, again, almost emotionless. Roll an insight check. Rude son of a bitch. <laughs> An 18. You can't see it quite just because of the way his face works. But there's something about his eyes that says vengeance. As he watches you go back the direction you came from with the warden, and then he goes back about his business. 
Uh, yeah, I'm going to use Earth Tremor on the stairs to mm -hmm. make him try to try to make him fall on his ass. To make a Lozen fall? Oh, yeah. Okay, drop the spell. <laughs> DC 14. All right, let's do this. A nine. He immediately falls on his ass. <laughs> <laughs> and... What level spell is Earth Tremor? One. One? That was magic. That was magic. You did that. I don't know what you're talking about. Nope, I'm, I, I know this sort of magic when I see it. That was an Earth Tremor spell. It propagated through these very stairs. The Warden rolls his eyes and just... Oh. This guy, right? Roll a Persuasion or Deception check. And this will be opposed by a Lozrin's similar roll. Oh, no. A nine. Versus... I rolled an eight, but his modifier is slightly higher than that. Oh, oh no. Stop so, it. but here's the thing. If you'd like, you can immediately force him to reroll. Yes. Okay. His luck twists slightly in the wrong direction. Uh, 19. <laughs> Jesus. It, it, it seems like you, you tried to twist his luck in the exact wrong direction, and I have, it has been brought to my attention that you had disadvantage. So go ahead and roll me another persuasion check and take the worst of the two. Oh, that's right. Mm -hmm. Thank you for keeping us honest. That's it, unfortunate. Uh, honestly, yeah, it is very unlucky. No, chat is helping me out. Chat is always... Uh, Always helping me out. All right. So that disadvantage is expunged, and the warden says, Okay. Did you do that? Did you cast that spell? Yes. <laughs> All right. I don't know what business you two have with each other, but this is a serious investigation. All right. So well, I'm going to help you. Yes. So I just two, don't like him. All right. That should not come into any of this. All right. Anything else from either of you? And I'm going to send this up the chain and it'll be reflected on your reports. Let's go. Oh, he's coming with us. Him? No, get out of here. <laughs> well, see, that's why I was trying to get him. There's easier ways to do that. But OK, just come with me. All right. <sighs> And then the warden stops for a moment, listens as if hearing a distant voice. Oh, sovereigns. It's an elemental. Oh, is it? Mm-hmm. Yep. All right, come along. Let's be faster about this. And he starts yes. hustling down the stairs. You're a teen at this point, so you can keep him up with him. So the two of you start running down the stairs towards the source of the chaos. Meanwhile... Garnet is sitting with Cyrus, attempting to have a conversation uh, over the noise of the raucous Kizjan meeting over on the other side. Uh, has Garnet led with anything aside from him just saying, I hope you like hot coffee or hot chocolate? Oh, yeah. She kind of like burned herself and mm -hmm. just kind of held her, her mouth and was while trying to kind of listen in or at least mm -hmm. hear from Una about the thing and. But if she isn't getting much, then she'll probably want to suggest to go somewhere else. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Uh, he'll go ahead and... Did you want anything to go? Oh, no. The drink's fine. Thanks. All right. He'll go ahead and, and uh, stand up. And as he goes, he reaches into his robes and he's going to pull out a small vial and say, here, this this will help. Takes it. Do I know what it is? Uh, 
Mm, roll an Arcana check. Ah, 24. This is a minor healing balm. It heals like oh. one point of damage. Uh, it'll fix your tongue. Oh, just... It's like, it's like throat coat tea for casters, you know? Oh, okay. So she drinks it as they're walking. Mm-hmm. And once they're more alone, she'll mm -hmm. be like, oh, uh, I got something for you. Um, kind of reaches in her bag and pulls out the wolf Spain, who's probably in some kind of package, and mm -hmm. hands it to him. I heard you're a very accomplished alchemist, and this might be helpful for you. Huh, he takes it. He looks over it for a moment. This is perfect. Thank you. Where'd it come from? I, you know, Ariana gave it to me. She's always gardening and stuff. So I, you were the first person I thought of when I got this. All right, little plus sign next to him. Cyrus will remember that. <laughs> <laughs> and as the two of you are making your way towards the, towards the library, he'll do some, some, Minor small talk, mostly asking questions about how have you been with every all the chaos that's going on? You know, are you well? How have you been settling into how are your studies going? A lot of those little small questions for you. Nothing particularly deep. Everything's kind of surface level at the moment, but more focused on you than anything else. Yeah, just is answering all the questions and does mm -hmm. it feel like there's like a weird elephant in the room? Because I remember like when we left off at the birthday, it's like you wanted to say something and then there's mm -hmm. like a explosion. Is that yeah. feeling still there? I'll roll an insight check. Oh, sheesh. A 15. Um, yeah, yeah, there is there, there, there's like, he's holding something back. He's biting his tongue about something. There's some sort of, nervous energy or weird energy it doesn't feel uncomfortable but it definitely feels maybe a little anxious but it's he doesn't normally look anxious like that's not his his vibe at all so it's, it's this weird sort of buzzing just beneath the surface are the conversations going well like he seems comfortable in the conversation or is yeah. he looking no weird? he's he he's very he's very polite he's very interested he asks follow-up questions like he's clearly tuned in he's not tuned out right now and he's very considerate and again not getting into anything particularly meaningful at this point but very very good at carrying on a conversation You've seen this before. This like, is almost like court uh, back back in court, you know, <laughs> not not formal court language, but somebody who who's been trained in polite society. What were you gonna say? Oh, I was gonna say I think she'll try and also steer the conversation towards him, like oh, what about you or something? Mm -hmm. If a question seems relatable, and but then eventually we'll just be like, so are you doing okay? I don't know. There was an explosion. I interrupted our last conversation at the birthday, but just checking in. Roll persuasion check for me, please. Twenty five. Wow. <laughs> OK. All right. Uh, honestly, Garnet, I'm doing amazingly. what you did that day i mean ever ever since the green gala i've just thought there was something about you but what you did on that day we are we are blessed we are living in miraculous times and the fact that i've just been going to school with you this entire time when you're the one who's been missing from garnet and by your grace, you saved this entire school. That it's a lot to take in. It's a good thing, but it's it's. I just never thought I would be alive at a time like this, or just spending my time with that. someone like you. It's 
it feels bigger than me. Takes a second to think about all of this because she she's like trying to sift through that whole part looking mm -hmm. for like a compliment or like a, in a more romantic personal way but is now <laughs> starting to realize the type mm -hmm. of tone he's having of seeing her as like a celebrity an icon instead of who she is and mm -hmm. kind of sees his like nervousish energy or at least his weirdest tone and probably sits like a hand on his hand and mm -hmm. just I'm just a person, Cyrus. You don't have to treat me any differently. And if anything, I'm blessed to be doing this project with you. All right. That smacks him right in the face. And he does a very good job of not looking like he got smacked in the face. But he got smacked in the face. His heartbeat goes up a little bit. You can tell just by your hand on his. Uh... That is not where he thought this was going at all. And he doesn't not like it. <laughs> so what's his reaction? He, just... he is going to take a moment to think about it and then smile a little bit and say, well, if I can be a blessing back to you, then... Then we're double blessed, I guess. And he, he smiles because he just like, you know, he thought he was going somewhere clever with that. And he wasn't. It sort of dies in his brain. She just casually like slides her hand back mm -hmm. and flips through some book pages and mm -hmm. to see if he wasn't going to follow up with anything. Just won't, won't say anything. We'll just mm -hmm. smile and flip through the book. <laughs> All right. I'll say, well, then person garnet what are you happy for uh happy to be alive is i guess is the very <laughs> the only thing we can be happy about right no um, there's there's a lot more than that there's a lot more than that well i'm happy right now where I am right now, right here with some books and you as my group partner. And she just like, <laughs> flipping, doesn't know, really know how to like hit on people. She's just like, mm -hmm. I'm just happy to be here. <laughs> like, okay. His, his attitude does change subtly throughout your study session. He goes from this sort of making sure that you're taken care of, making sure that you have everything around you, being like very polite and, and reverential and respectful to being a little bit more warm. And he'll start, yeah, I'll focus on, on the conversation as well. But now he's taking more of an interest in just um, in you, less in these surface level things. It, it seems like now that you've sort of given him these little signals, he's taking it as a sign for him to, he he leads with his heart and with his brain. He's, he's very much trying to be like, well, if you're this person, not this icon, not this saint, roll another insight check for me. 19, He he is struggling to hold these two concepts at the same time. He is like you've told him, hey, I'm not I'm not just this religious saint, uh, but he's very well trained in the books and the religion. And he knows that he just saw a miracle. He saw like this is a holy event and you are a holy person and he can't get that out of his brain. He's trying to basically start taking all of his experiences with you and allow them to create this other image of you. And as he does that, he starts to warm up. He makes occasional small touches, like turning a page while your hand is on it, little things here and there. Um, and But he still stays very focused on, like, yeah, he'll, he'll get into the books and into the questions. But you can tell that he's not so much about uh, flirting as he is about emotional intimacy, establishing like a meaningful connection, having real conversations, talking about what matters to you and what you actually think and what 
all that sort of stuff. That's that's more his speed. I think like if they end up connecting, I don't know how long this, like how many hours or whatever we're spending together, but mm -hmm. I think she might open up about like other stuff like if she maybe if there it feels like there's an elephant in the room or if he's like dodging something i think she mm -hmm. would pretty basically be like so do you and the bronthans ever wonder why i came here or are unhappy with me over mm. anything i wasn't going to ask uh, i wouldn't presume to think you'd want to talk about it uh, i wonder Yeah, there's a series of unfortunate uh, things that happened where the uh, machine prince and the minions attacked and I was taken away for a little while and sent here. And I was led to believe that Rantha abandoned me and... I caused a little bit of strife in my, you know, when I was younger. And I don't really know what to believe because I haven't had any contact with them. And I've been just kind of trying to live day by day and being happy in the moment instead of worry about the future. Although we can't escape the future and, and fate. And I, reg I regret how I've handled the situation. Although I was led to believe things that weren't true, but... I, I trust that, you know, I had good intentions and I'm doing my best. <laughs> Garnet, when everybody thought you were dead, there was a, there were 16 days of national mourning. And 16. 16 days, four times four. They, and uh, there were pyres lit across the city in your honor. All the, the priests and scribes asked the Phoenix Lord to show you their fate, and they saw only darkness. There was nothing there. Search parties have been out looking for any trace of you for you the last few years. Every year on your birthday, on the holy day, we don't just celebrate, we mourn as well. You were not forgotten. You've never been forgotten. Well, I'm hoping my life will lead to things that people will remember me by. And if, if Brantha ever makes contact and hopefully they won't be upset with me, it'll be a lot of explaining, but I, it was good to kind of get that out to you because I know I wasn't sure how the Bronthans thought of what they thought of me, but you guys were very kind to me on my birthday, so thank you for making this a welcoming place and a place that isn't my home, or well, now it is. He smiles, uh, acts like he's about to say something, thinks about it for a moment, doesn't say it, and he will respond with, you already have, though. Done things to be to be remembered by. Yeah. 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 Well, that attracted attention, but it's Sailor shows his love in many different ways, and I'm glad he's still been there for me. Give me another insight check. Ten. Oh, well, maybe I lucky dice that. I'm very <laughs> curious. Burning one. Mm -hmm. That's better. A 20. <clears throat> That's not what he was talking about. Oh. Yeah. Well, she's going to pretend that's what he's talking about. <laughs> okay. And it goes unanswered. And they, they continue studying throughout the night. And he'll, he'll ask gentle questions about, like, if you're ready to talk about what happened to you after you left. But he doesn't want to push the matter. Um. He'll sort of mention that the other Bronthans there would, you know, if, if you ever feel lonely or if you want friends, they would absolutely open, you know, be happy to spend time with you as, just as, as friends, as people with a shared background. Um, 
I know he knows it may be a little bit awkward given this miracle that happened, but you know, they can still they can still appreciate that. They can he's sure that they'll see it that way too. I think she still has it stuck in her mind that he sees her as like a something higher than what she thinks she is and is mm-hmm. just not like obviously is connecting on a good emotional level, but is not like as romantically obsessed with the situation. And mm-hmm. it's definitely like gone differently than how she expected it to. Mm-hmm. Okay. Is there anything else? Like the scene will just progress until late at night. He's in no rush to go home. Uh, is there anything else you want to add to that or throw in there? She will ask him to walk her back to the room mm-hmm. because safety and late at night and whatnot. And yeah, and she'll probably make some jokes like, "Oh, if it's well, if it's easier for you to treat me as a princess, you can continue <laughs> with that." And this is making it a joking right. way. Well, I need when, an escort back to my room. When he offers you his arm, he's joking. She still takes it. <laughs> yeah. no, he's not like mean joking. He's he's just trying to make it so it's not like, you know, being all aw, awestruck and reverential. He's matching your tone. She'll giggle and take the arm and mm. just will walk very like, oh, my knight or like some stupid <laughs> comment like that. All right. He'll go ahead and, and uh, walk you back to your room. And... Uh, More studying this weekend? Yeah. Uh, name a day. I, I got you. Perfect. Um, how's after dinner? Why don't we just... Well, might as well just have dinner, too. Uh, yeah, that was what I was thinking, actually. Oh, great minds think alike. I'll make all the arrangements. Cool. Pick me up whenever. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and uh, he'll say his his very polite, very kind good nights and uh, take off. Ariana is not there when you get back. And I briefly do need to go back to Mason before we see where things have gone with Ariana, unfortunately. Uh, as she's walking back, the one thing I will say is that you notice more and more uh, wardens and caretakers rushing in, and you see some red, orange, and yellow robed young kids being evacuated and ushered away from the lodge. And you notice the fire is growing. A lot. And as you get closer, you see that the fire is walking and jumping into trees and burning them, and when people approach it, it roars at them. Well, that's not good. Mm, Just like that kid said, elemental. Wow, what do we do about this? Uh, You are supposed to be the expert on plant fires. You want to shed any more light on that? I have no idea what this is. I've never encountered this before. Mm. Elemental stuff? Not not my thing. But I might have an idea. Okay. What do you have in mind? Well, um <clears throat> isn't there a wellspring nearby, right? An elemental mm-hmm. wellspring? I I could I could gra- gather some water uh and and use tidal wave. And try to put it out. Okay, with a shot. Can contain the, 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 the thing. What is this thing? I don't know what this is. It's a fire elemental. Yeah, let's go ahead and give that a shot. Okay, great. So the waters that run through here are no longer quite the same. No longer charged the way that they were when Dubasif was powering this entire operation. Um, but there is a stream nearby that you can call upon, and it does have elemental water energy, a connection to the well springs in it. Uh, w- and they can sort of try to corral this thing towards it, lure it with, you know, burnable objects running around. They'll go ahead and lead it towards it. Uh, you want to just do tidal wave when it's in range? Yeah. Send it. Okay. 
as you send forth your power and encant the rites and make the marks in the air and reach towards it, you grab onto it and a spark runs right through your magic from your very heart. Earlier, when you were trying to pull from the same radiant power, you felt that connection with Garnet. You accidentally pulled from the fire that burns within you. It's as if that first pull for that power of life was still in your system and it just needed to get out. That flashes into the water and it, the tidal wave rushes forward and then stands up and then strides onto the land and turns to look at you with two green, watery eyes. Did I make a second elemental? You... What? Oh, oh I mean, uh... <clears throat> what is that? Roll a deception check, please. Ooh, a two. You have a plus 10 on that? Holy crap. Oh, no, you Wait, rolled a seven. What? Uh, no, ignore me. You rolled a 10. Okay, yeah. so remember <laughs> earlier when you forced a Lozern to make a reroll? And then you yeah. had disadvantage? Yeah, when you did that, you gave me the power to do the same thing. So I'm going to go ahead and force a reroll. And take the All worst right. of the two. Yeah, we're going to take the 12. <laughs> All right, he looks at you for a moment, and then the water elemental utters this deep, bellowing, watery roar and starts charging towards the fire elemental. And we're going to leave it here as we go back to Mason. <laughs> what have I done? Mason, uh, the meeting comes to an end, and uh, there's, there's a bit of a tab. Everybody pays their tab and cleans up the, de the whole, you know, the table and such, and... Fentisco is sitting there uh, and she's helping clean up. I assume you're helping to clean up. Um, yeah. She's thinking about, well, I guess that went better than it could have. Certainly a, a step in the right direction though. That's mm -hmm. the, that's the important bit. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, Get some actual studying done after this. We have to. Okay, yeah, we we should. <laughs> we probably should. It's not due for a couple of weeks. True. We could do that thing where we uh, procrastinate until the last minute and then do it <laughs> and uh, get an okay grade and then move on. Yeah, that's 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 better for it. I I think you got some of that black tea on your hands there just wash up and i'll catch you afterwards okay uh i'll, I'll yeah. wait for you right here okay okay all right are you gonna step in what are you how are you gonna clean yourself up are you gonna step into the bathroom or uh i guess so yeah okay. would step into bathroom shape water mm -hmm. as you're all. shaping the water in the basin there's a mirror on the wall for anybody who needs to gussy themselves up, you know, just like in any standard bathroom. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> and when you look into the mirror, you see yourself looking back at you. But the room behind you is wrong. What about it? It's not here. It's somewhere else. It's a dark basement illuminated only by oil lamps. Roll a perception check to see what you can see in there. All right. I think kind of instinctively uh, Mason would uh, just kind of turn around and then turn back to the reflection and see like, well, am I seeing things? But uh, when, you, when you look behind inside? you, it's just the bathroom Very at Volstabor, just like normal. Percep perception. perception, yeah. Okay. 16. 16. Okay. It's underground, lit by these torches, and there are people here gathered together, wearing various clothes. Um, 
refugees, most likely. All sorts of different pieces uh, put together, all of them with their heads bowed, all of them speaking draconic. And you recognize one of them. It's Kepesk. The contact that uh, you've met before that Sventisco meets with in the refugee camp. Mm -hmm. And they're all joined together in some sort of prayer. Roll a religion check for me. Oh, natural oh, one. Just, you got me. anything for that? Got some lucky dice. You also uh, have uh, inspiration for your new tattoo. Oh, true. Nice. I'll burn that first. Yeah, we'll we'll, we'll use that. Okay, let's um, let's send it. Oh, jeez. Well, we're gonna lucky dice on top of that. You can lucky dice <laughs> on top of that if you want. A right, 15. 15. Okay. Right. Respectable number. They're not, this is, it's, it's, it's draconic, but it's not any prayer you're familiar with. Like there's draconic meditations and there's prayers to the 10 ancestral dragons. That's not this. As it was before, so shall it be. The power of the old sets us free who shattered the infernal lash and burned their armies into ash. The seven eldest we call to thee to break our bonds and set us free. And the vision fades. It's the bathroom once again. Also, they were speaking draconic, so it rhymes in draconic. I was just giving you a, you know, like yeah. when you translate Italian poetry. <laughs> Fair. What? So it, it seemed like so through the mirror, seeing the that kind of reflection, it was where, like what did it look like? The location of it again? It was underground. Uh, it was illuminated. It was like a basement somewhere, probably in the refugee camp. Yeah. Uh, torches everywhere. I will give you a flat intelligence check to remember any other details. Okay. Okay. The wall that they were all facing had carvings on it. Not like fancy carvings, just almost scratched into the wall. Uh, it was an archway inside an archway inside an archway, just stacking up. Very simple drawing, like carvings of archways or doors nested within each other. There were seven of them. It reminded you of the Silent City which you oh, no. recently saw with your friends. Oh, like the same aesthetic of like the, the front of it or mm -hmm. like entrance or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Oh boy. Uh, has, I, I don't assume so, but in reflection or mirrors ever being all wonky, nothing like this has ever happened. No, like no visions of anything. This is, this is new. <sighs> Mason's very, taken aback by this probably like in the shape water that he was doing just like drops the water Splash. like splashes to the ground mm -hmm. goes almost like <sighs> Mason at this point almost has like a morbid curiosity because the sage is so interested in this stuff it like mm -hmm. walks up like probably in vain but goes to like touch the mirror mm -hmm. it's cold deeply cold to the touch And you hear as if it's flowing up your very bones the vibrations of a conversation. Also in Draconic, between two voices. One of them is Kepesk and you don't recognize the other one. Ah, more, more, uh, more Imago cards. Okay. Oh, right. no. <laughs> as you place your hand on it, the bathroom behind you, the reflection parts rippling away. And now you see Kepesk, and he's talking to somebody else, but that person is seen from the back. They're on the wrong side. You can't see their face. They're wearing a cloak. And the two of them are speaking once again in Draconic. Underground, illuminated by lanterns. Roll a perception check to listen into their conversation. Okay. 
Uh, this is another lucky dice time. <laughs> Run into these Send quickly. it. Ah, 16. Okay. A 16. It's in Draconic, and you're saying, I don't know if the children can be counted on. The other one says, you don't need to count on them. They just need to do their part. Without the book, we can never set ourselves free. And they've gotten closer than anyone else. Have you seen Svintisco recently? No, no, I've lost contact. Establish contact again and keep them focused. Get the book. Before El now takes the reins, and we can fix everything. Whoosh. It parts once again. Mason takes a hand off of Mir, takes some steps back, looks behind him again as if he'll somehow see what he was seeing behind him, but of course doesn't. And uh, rushes out of the uh, restroom right back to Sventisco and says, I just saw something I don't know how I saw. What well, was it? Are you okay? I think so. Kind of takes a couple moments and is like, oh, I didn't like... <laughs> try to recenter myself at all but it's not like reminding himself like okay deep breaths let's try okay it takes a few moments yes i'm okay remember when i told you a long time ago in my life how reflection was weird that one time but i didn't really go into detail on it mm-hmm I've been talking to the sage recently about more reflection-y stuff and it seemed like she was very concerned. And I guess for good reason, because the mirror in that bathroom just uh, showed me things. Kepesk. Talking to people. And then Mason would say everything that just happened. Like, what? Okay. all of it. Just how do you know this is true? I do you know if this actually happened. I don't. It, it could be fabricated, but there's something around me and seeing things and reflections. I, 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 I don't know what else to make of it. But Kepesk, if it is true, might know of something. It seemed... I mean, that's very strange, right? Is Kepesk trying to... Assuming it is true, maybe not, but use us? Use the Kizchan? To get the book? The, the book? The book? The, the book. I don't know. I hate this. Maybe you should... Maybe you should talk to the sage about this. I was thinking that too. Maybe you should talk to her about it now. Yeah? You think so? Yeah. Maybe not studying can wait. True. He found an excuse to not study. <laughs> she she scowls, but also smirks at the same time. It's not funny, but it's kind of funny. Uh, and she'll go with you to make your way to the sage if you want. Uh, yeah. Um, I guess this last thing on, that's on Mason's mind mm -hmm. on, on the walk there is like, do you recognize that kind of prayer at all that they were doing the, the first part mm -hmm. 
bits and pieces of it, maybe. The people who are really high up within within the faithful, they've said things like that before. Mm. But I'd never, I mean... And the, the carvings? I, I The carvings, no, I don't know anything like that. I saw something like it. Mm -hmm. Silent City related mm. imagery, at least. Which I'd, I haven't told you all of yet, but in trying to help the Codex members and taking them through a little Mordain um, experience, we saw the Silent Mason. City there. Okay. I just, it was to help. It ended up not helping, but um, we learned things. You inhale the Mordain vapor and merged your dreams with them before you did with me? It was a bit of practice mm -hmm. so that when we, if you're interested, do it, then it will be better. Okay, well, I hope that practice paid off because you're, you're cutting me in next time. Okay. Not with them. No, okay. not with them. I just, you told me to keep tabs on them, Garnet specifically. I'm, I'm right? not upset. And I'm just. Next time, all right? Okay. Holding out on me, Mason. Uh, yeah, I just, I actually, I bought some more the other day. So we, we have. Okay, we have good. More. Yeah, hold on to that. I, I will. I have a all special right. little stash just for us, and it'll mm. only be for us, okay? She elbows you and keeps walking <laughs> with you. Uh, <laughs> Meanwhile, in the grove, Ariana, this water elemental and this fire elemental are facing off against each other, and your magic brought both of them into being. <clears throat> the wardens right. are gathering around, and they're sort of forming a perimeter, and uh, one of them yells, Hey, do you think this is going to sort itself out? What could go wrong with the fire and a water elemental battling it out in a bunch of trees? <laughs> uh, okay, we should probably do something about this. Meanwhile, the two of them clash and there's a huge burst of steam. Psst, erupts as the two and of them are just... Looks great. <laughs> Normal. Stand back, everybody. I'm going to handle this. As Chad Chaddington raises his mace and charges directly into both of the supernatural beings. He's gonna try to fight them with a mace. Is Chad gonna <laughs> die? <laughs> what a Chad! Oh, what a Chad. Ariana, do you want to intervene in any way? Not at all. Okay, you're just gonna <laughs> let it play out? Yeah. Okay, it's time for a little action figures, I guess. It's been it's been a while this episode. There haven't been any action figures. I suppose we can go along with this. Uh, give me a moment. We'll just turn this off. We'll do this. We'll go here. Oh, it's been a while, hasn't it, since we had this scene? <laughs> yeah. We didn't even have Garnet's art. Memories. Oh my god. All right. Where's Chad? <laughs> and let's get our elementals on the field. And you know, I'm we we can we can all get a piece of this. This will be how we wrap things up tonight. Who wants the fire? Ariana, you get the fire elemental. Who okay. between uh Crow and Eleven Kiwi, who wants the water elemental? I'll take it. <laughs> okay. All right. That leaves Crowan as the Chad. <laughs> of course. Like a child. <laughs> All right. Uh, everybody roll a d20 for initiative. Just roll a flat d20. All right. Oops. Ooh. Ooh, natural 20 for the fire elemental. Okay. That's All right. Good. All right. Where's some. I yeah, don't we'll want to go first. <laughs> <laughs> That's too bad. All right. Raging fire elemental. There's a water elemental directly in front of you, and there's a crispy burnable mortal approaching. What do you do? 
It's definitely about the water elemental. I mean, that's a my mortal enemy. Okay. Super effective damage coming my way. Yeah, that is true. That's true. All right, you have two touch attacks, and these are each at plus six. So go ahead and roll 1d20 plus six and do it twice. A 13, which is not a hit, and a 22, which is a hit. You deal 2d6 plus three fire damage. All right. Okay. Chunk, there's a splash, a sizzle of steam. Now, uh, let me keep you. You have the water elemental. You've just been ripped from the eternal ocean of Lee Bond, deep within the wellsprings, into this mortal world with its impurities mixed of all the elements, surrounded by all these things that absorb water and drink it. And then in front of you is a freaking fire elemental that just slapped you in the face. What do you do? I'm going. Wait. So th this person can control water? No, you are a water elemental, and you're in a world where all these plants around you drink water, and there's a fire elemental directly in front of you. I don't know what water elementals can do. <laughs> well, they can uh, slap, and they can <laughs> drown people. So you could just try to like merge into it and uh, put it out the hard yeah. way. Yeah. Okay. Let's do that. Okay. <laughs> Necro, roll 1d20, roll a strength saving throw. Roll 1d20 plus uh, zero, actually. Oh, I almost put plus zero. <laughs> <laughs> All right. The two of you uh, hiss and sizzle, and I'm going to have each of you roll 5d6. And that's how much damage you take as the two of them just into each other. <laughs> oh, jeez. All right. Right now, the fire elemental is still roaring defiantly over the other one as Chad Chaddington approaches. Uh, Crowen, you, you have Chad Chaddington. Yeah. What would you like to do? Oh, he has a, a couple of defensive spells. He can smack things real good. Chad uh, Chaddington for sure knows that he could deal with both of these things single-handedly. It goes okay. up and smacks both of them. Okay. Oh, mama. You get one. You get one. Yeah. Roll uh, two attacks at 1d20 plus 5 each. Okay. Uh, natural 20 for the Jesus. first. <laughs> All right. And it's 17. Very he chatty. Beats the absolute crap out of the fire elemental. Yeah. Uh, and he'll do, as a bonus action, he has his Warden's Mark. So he marks the fire elemental, which means it has disadvantage to attack anybody except him. Cool. And you deal, what is that? 1D, 2d8 plus 2 against the fire elemental with your magic mace. 2d8 plus 2 before crit? Or no, this or... is the crit. 2d8 plus 2. All right. 14. Smack it for 14, and you deal 1d8 plus 2 against the water elemental. Uh, three. <laughs> okay. Smack, smack. Ariana, some... Some mortal just ran up and slapped you in the face really hard. <laughs> oh, yeah. All attention is turned towards Chad Chaddington right okay. now. Okay. Uh, Absolutely. Lemon Kiwi. As it, as it should be. A mortal just walked up and smacked you in the face with a, with a mace. What do you do? <laughs> I'm going to do the equivalent of pocket sand, but with water. <laughs> just splash him in his face and go back to beating the shit out of the fire guy. All right, so uh, fire elemental roll two attacks at 1d20 plus, what is that? Plus six. Oh, Chad, give disadvantage to the elementals. Okay, roll again. You have disadvantage <laughs> on that. <laughs> All right, he, he blocks that one with his shield. <laughs> now roll your actual attack. A natural 20. <laughs> oh, no. Wait a minute. Roll 4d6 plus three. Wait, don't I have disadvantage? That was the first, the 24 and the 14, that was the disadvantage pairing. So this one hits. Oh, yeah. The, oh, yeah. This, this crit hit. will be for 46 <laughs> plus 3, please. Um, All right. Chad not Chaddington possible. not only takes 15 points of damage, he is also now on fire. Oh, that's fine. He's a Chad. You can deal with it.
I need to give him a little hit point bar. All right. And then uh, you get pocket sanded by the water elemental. So to roll 1d20 plus 7 for pocket sand. 21. Chad Chaddington, please roll a strength saving throw at plus 5. Okay. And does it put out the fire? 18, by the way. 18. Uh, you succeed. You have now been extinguished, but you still take 2d8 plus 4 damage. Oof. And as the fire elemental ruthlessly attempts to burn this impudent mortal, and the water elemental just keeps punching it in the face, uh, and Chad just swipes left and right with, with his mace back and forth, is Ariana doing anything? Uh, she wants to, but she's so conflicted. <laughs> it's her fault. And she doesn't want to make the problem work. So I, I'm trying to think about how many spell slots she even has left at this point. Because mm -hmm. the plant growth is a third level spell slot, even if it turned into a fireball. Yeah, and tidal wave as well was mm -hmm. a third level. So I'm out of third level slots. Um, I haven't used any of my level twos, but none of them seem particularly useful. Mm -hmm. Um. <laughs> Wait, do you have shape water? I don't actually have that spell. Oh, so that actually doesn't help. Oh um, man. I think I will use Earthbind on the Fire Elemental, though. Okay, drop that in chat. Let me know what that does. <laughs> All right, its flying speed is reduced to zero. Okay. And at that moment, from the water behind where you summoned the water elemental, where it emerged, you see bubbles, and then the river begins to drain like a siphon, just whirlpool that proceeds down and down and down. And an enormous frog-like face, incredibly well-dressed, bursts forth. It's lower half a cyclone of water. You have seen Daddy. Daddy. a creature <laughs> very similar to this before, though this one is not identical. Impudent I... mortals, bring me to those who have dared to afflict such an affront, such violence against our cousin, Dubasi. <laughs> I've missed that voice. And uh, no. <laughs> what was that? Oh, that's this is bad. <laughs> <laughs> and that seems like enough of an absolute cluster for us to end on for tonight. Oh, could I do one more thing before? Oh we... yeah, absolutely. What would you like to do? Not water elemental related. Okay, not water what? elemental related. Actual <laughs> plot related. Flock related things. <laughs> All right. So as Ariana stands there in the grove with Chad Chaddington ignoring the Mara, just continuing to try to beat the crap out of these elementals, them flail fighting at each other and the Mara making these pronouncements, the camera flows all the way away from there to <laughs> Garnet, where she just had a date? Maybe? Anyways, we rejoin <laughs> her. What do you want to do? She'll wait for Ariana for a bit, but is very, like, conflicted. Mm -hmm. So she'll go to the study room early to kind of wait for Elle now and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But she's been kind of talking to herself because now her shadow has split into two. Because at oh. level five, I now get two shadows. So that has mm. now split. Interesting. What's the other so, one called? I don't know yet. That's, okay, we're working on it. You sure? <laughs> that's, in, that's in, under construction. But... She'll just be like, I'm quiet, I'm thinking, I'm thinking, shut up. And then she'll pick up the sending scroll and cast it. Mm -hmm. And we'll designate the target as Merrick. And you can count this if you want, but I've, mm -hmm. I've pre-counted this. And we'll go to cast a spell. She's kind of like hesitating and just goes for it, casts the sending spell, and says, Merrick, it's been years since you've left me, 
I have so many questions. I've learned of horrible things. Please come see me. I need you. And that she will send that off. Okay. And that's that's it. That's all I had. Moments later, you hear his voice responding to you. Garnet, I trust you have not been remiss in your studies. We cannot meet where you are. Come find me. And I think that's where we're going to end for tonight. <laughs> yeah. I got you with the cliffhanger, just in case. <laughs> perfect, perfect. Uh, oh, man. Yeah, no, that'll work for me. See, when you got that sending scroll, I knew it was either going to be Merrick <laughs> Some shit. or Marison. Like, those were the two I had in my head. It was going to be one of those two, hands down. And I am excited that you picked Merrick. I am very excited. And like post credit scene, it's definitely like Garnet is in a panicky mood uh, mm -hmm. trying to send that off because she feels like she's running out of time. Mm -hmm. That's kind of like the, the, what I'll say about that. All right. And so she's sitting there. And how long before midnight did you do this? Uh, pretty much, I don't know, shortly after the study session. I don't know how late we mm -hmm. went. Okay. Shortly like, before midnight. Okay. So as you're sort of sitting there panicking, you can hear L now coming down to go to your regularly scheduled meetings. And she'll leave the like used scroll like on the mm -hmm. desk because she is probably second guessing doing what she did. But mm -hmm. she thinks she has a plan, but she's like, oh, fuck. <laughs> At the same time. <laughs> perfect. Perfect. All right. I think we're going to leave our heroes there. Uh, Mason and Svantisco going to talk to the sage about a vision he just had. Uh, Ariana watching an absolute cluster in the grove and apparently meeting Dubasif's cousin and <laughs> Garnet contacting her old mentor and worrying about whether she did the right thing as her new mentor enters the room. That seems like a perfect place for us to wrap up. This was a fun one. Thank you, folks. Ooh. Yay. Good stuff. Oh, man. Just a normal school. Yeah, yeah we, actually, cool. we actually did some normal school stuff. We did normal teenagers. I know, right? <laughs> All right. We'll go ahead and send out a raid. And other than that, uh, do we have everybody next week? Yeah. Yes. yes. If we don't, life is very tumultuous. If we don't, you'll all know. As always, thank you all for joining us. Uh, and we'll see you next time. Goodbye.